Terra Luna has outperformed, outperformed the uh, crypto market with a 17% bump yesterday, and that pushed prices above $95 per uh, token. But you know, Terra Luna has a lot of fans, including Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz, who has an actual Luna tattoo on his arm. But not everyone thinks Luna hung the moon. So joining us now to discuss is University of Calgary law professor Ryan Clements. Welcome back, Dr. Clements. Thank you for having me. Glad to be back. Yeah, you know, before we get we get into this, um, it, I, I think it's a good idea to step back. You know, a lot of people might know a lot about crypto, but they're a little bit, let's say, uh, fuzzy when it comes to understanding the tokenomics behind Terra Luna, UST, and, and how those two interact. Um, they know that there's some sort of connection with Luna and UST. They're not quite sure how or why that happens. So perhaps you can sort of spell out from the, from the step back, if you will, what exactly is the interaction between these two currencies? And uh, you know, how do they work together? And, and maybe along the way, what bothers you about it? Sure. So the dynamics of the Terra Luna relationship has has somewhat evolved over time. When I first started researching uh, and writing in this area, uh, US uh, Terra USD was a purely algorithmic stablecoin, meaning it was a uh, token that. Uh, purported to maintain a stable peg, and it held that stable peg similar to other stable coins uh, through uh, without any intrinsic backing or without any assets or without any collateral, but by creating economic incentives to use the stable coin and creating arbitrage opportunities with another token called Luna, where as the stablecoin lost its peg, whether it was increasing in value above a dollar or below, there was an opportunity to be able to mint or burn Luna in an arbitrage dynamic to be able to maintain this peg. Now, over time, the uh, Luna Foundation Guard in the Terra ecosystem has uh, looked to uh, uh, supplant that also, or, or to add to that with a, a Bitcoin and AVAX reserve. In the event that the uh, economic uh, incentives and the arbitrage mechanism and the supply modifications of this Luna uh, uh, Terra stablecoin relationship break down, they now have a reserve that they can look to, to add to the peg. And so effectively, it's a different version of a stablecoin, that uses economic incentives and arbitrage in order to maintain a stable value. So when, when now, we had when it comes to, sorry, go ahead. No, I, so I was going to say, you know, we we had Do Kwan, uh, the founder of, of Terra Luna, uh, on our our show a while back in a, in a very interesting interview, um, and he he said, look, the difference between what they're doing and what happened with Iron Titan, uh, which was one of the more spectacular algorithmic stablecoin collapses. Uh, he said the difference between the two is that there were better economic incentives in the Terra Luna e ecosystem to keep that peg going. Uh, that mm -hmm. would make sense. And it seems like, for instance, now there's the Anchor Protocol, which pays 20% returns. Uh, mm -hmm. Even he's acknowledged that's a little bit artificial and it, it, it mm -hmm. won't sustain. But yet it, it's still in place relatively. It's a little bit under 20 percent, mm -hmm. but it's still there. So what is, what's the issue? I mean, you know, he seems to say everything's all right. Why don't you believe him? OK, so when I if I look at Terry USD and I think, OK, this is money, this is a substitute for money that I have to be. Uh, cognizant of what the risks to that money are. With respect to using Terra USD as a substitute for money, I am susceptible to the risks within the Terra ecosystem and I'm susceptible to the volatility risk of the reserves and the sufficiency of the reserves that it's now currently compiling. If you look at the Terra ecosystem, two thirds of the demand for UST is coming from the anchor protocol. Lending demand on on the Anchor Protocol significantly is higher than borrowing demand on the Anchor Protocol. As a result, the Terra Foundation is having to inject reserves 
to uh, top up depleting reserves on that protocol. So I look across the Terra ecosystem and I think, what are some things that could lead to instability that could potentially cause this to become depegged? And there's quite a few. There might be another borrowing protocol that's more popular that takes liquidity out of Anchor and moves it to another. Staking demand may decrease in Terra. The reserves may not be sufficient to defend the peg. The use cases of Terra may not be utilizable. There might be a run on, on, on Luna. So it's not that it can't be stable. My argument is not that it can't be stable. My argument that is that in order for it to be stable, there are a number of assumptions that have to hold. We need sufficient demand in this ecosystem. We need this ecosystem to be able to add to the reserves. And, and I'll point out that the reserves were not something that that were originally in, in the ecosystem design. The reserves are something that have come after. I look at this and I think the fact that Terra is adding to this reserves or acknowledging the need to reserves suggests to me that they don't think the ecosystem in and of itself is sufficient to, to be able to keep this peg, which is not what the uh, original design was. This is something that's come after. And so I look at it and I think, okay, in order to maintain this peg, these assumptions have to hold. And I think Anchor right now, with the very high APIs on Anchor and the fact that Terra Foundation is having to inject liquidity into Anchor in order to maintain those yields, that looks vulnerable to me over time. And another thing to bring up in all of this too is, there has been a continual narrative of this being a decentralized play, this being different than the centralized uh, uh, stable coins that, that hold off-chain reserves. But when I look at this, I think this seems very centralized to me. We, we have Terra Foundation, who is injecting reserves into Anchor in order to keep this stable. We have Luna Foundation Guard, which is going to control, operate, and deploy reserves to maintain the uh, potential peg in the event that there's instability. It's looking less and less decentralized over time and much more centralized. And actually, the stability that the, the most significant stability is the is the Bitcoin and the AVAX reserves. That moves it actually more towards the model of the off-chain uh, coins like Tether and USDC. But nonetheless, it does keep it somewhat stable. I mean, we have this outside investment, mm -hmm. outside money coming in to keep it afloat. Um, much the same mm -hmm. way you can almost consider some of these uh, major stables, its two biggest rivals, USDT and USDC, uh, currently kind of do that, essentially, right? Uh, USDC, a mm -hmm. uh, little more, um, uh, you know, I don't want to say transparent, but at least they're saying, hey, look, you know what, we, we can sort of match our liabilities, our assets and our liabilities. Tether a little bit different, uh, as we know. Sure. Uh, but nonetheless, compared to what the demand is to for uh, um, it to re for redemptions, they're able to, at, at least for the time being, they're able to meet those redemptions and they can always hold mm -hmm. off on what people mm -hmm. can do. But with this, with UST taking in outside investments, can't that keep the party going and, and the punch bowl filled for a long time? I mean, is this something to even worry I, about? I, good. Theoretically, again, that's a big assumption that they can keep taking in outside investments and that the outside investments are going to be sufficient to continue to prop up the ecosystem. So, like, if if the strongest argument for this is that we can keep getting outside investments to prop up the ecosystem, that seems like uh, uh, an inherent uh, fragility that we need to be aware of. Because even with the Bitcoin reserves, it's not – the question will be – one of scale. Can the reserves continue to match the market cap of the UST? Because if it can't, then we rely on this kind of acceptance assumption that there's enough use, there's enough demand, and there's enough outside money keep continually coming in to maintain this and to uh, uh, ward off any depegging. It, it's possible, you know, like uh, uh, there, there's People, you know, Matt Levine wrote about it yesterday, where it is possible that you could move from what he described as Ponzi to acceptance to stability. It's possible. My point is 
if we're in that process, we need to be aware. And I actually think that it would be healthy and add some trust to be able to have some more clear disclosures and maybe some operational controls and some stability in this. I don't think we need to look at regulation necessarily as mutually exclusive. If we're wanting to use this as a form of money, it, it could be helpful to have some understanding of where the vulnerabilities are and where the control mechanisms are, and particularly on this concentration side, I think. So great explanation, by the way, Dr. Clements, but and we're seeing mm -hmm. this price pump in Luna compared to the rest of the crypto market. So I wonder, mm -hmm. it, are, is it working? Because they are building this community, they are building this hype, and they have a lot of uh, you know talk around the LFG, the Luna Foundation Guard buying. Mm -hmm. um, their goal is $10 billion worth of Bitcoin. So could mm -hmm. those reserves, are they enough to prop up and uh, we, keep their UST peg? We don't know that. We, we there there is hype, but I would also add that there are, I would venture to say, an increasing number of doubters on whether particularly the anchor protocol is sustainable, and if it is sustainable, in what form can it be self-sustainable? Because right now the yield is due to the injection of liquidity. It's not due to the fact that borrowing and the fees from the platform and this and from the protocol and the staking are sufficient to pay out those yields. Right now, it needs it needs external liquidity in order to pay out those yields. And I think that there is an increasing number of people who are looking at this saying this doesn't look sustainable to me. And if it's not sustainable, then what does that mean? Does it mean that? that the demand that exists currently in the ecosystem that is building these external reserves, which again, I point out wasn't part of the original plan. This is something that to me that the Terra Foundation says, we need this because this probably isn't sustainable on its own. So they're building these reserves on the side. Will that be su sufficient in the future? It might be. I think it brings up some other interesting questions, like for one, does that create a concentration risk? Does that create a, a kind of a, unique whale holder status of Terra that, that they can potentially uh, uh, create and cascade uh, volatility across the crypto ecosystem when they have to de deploy those reserves to maintain the peg? What, what role does Terra play as the, as the Bitcoin reserves increase over time? I think those are some interesting questions and interesting questions about kind of general market stability. And I think it also brings up some really interesting questions in, in the event that, that this stability is maintained for, for quite a while. And we see things like potential use cases for payments mechanisms with UST. How does that interconnect? the non-crypto world with the crypto world. And, and if there is that interconnection between the non-crypto world and the crypto world, how much is the non-crypto world now reliant on the on the Luna Foundation Guard and the Terra Foundation to maintain the stability and the payment mechanism that they're using? So I think that there's some interesting concentration risk issues and some systemic risk issues that, that happen as a result of the uh, continual maintain, uh, the continual growth of UST as a stable coin. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to ask you is about the systemic risk question. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could sort of tease that out a little bit, because with all these stable coin debates, there's always people who are like, this is going to crash and bring down the whole system with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then other people are like, that's ridiculous. But, you know, if there is any credence to this fear, can you just like tease mm -hmm. out how that would work? Like, how would a collapse of this specific, you know, stable coin s s potentially lead to some sort of systemic risk? Yeah, so... That highly depends on who's using it and for what reason are they using it. So right now, I, I, it's, it's hard to really make the case that something like UST is being used outside of the crypto ecosystem. I know that there are idiosyncratic examples of this and, you know, and, and I know that there's you know, efforts to make UST. I know there's Kai and there's there's efforts to make it uh, more utilizable outside of the crypto uh, ecosystem. But for the most part, what we're seeing right now with uh, stable coins, in particular the UST, is it's used for income earning or yield earning opportunities within the DeFi ecosystem. So as I mentioned, two thirds of UST is locked up in an anchor protocol right now. It's being used to move, uh, basically move money, stores of value, 
between stable stores of value between D, the DeFi ecosystem and centralized crypto asset trading platforms. It's used in trading uh, strategies to avoid slippage on trades. And so you can see it's used primarily within the crypto ecosystem itself. Um, so if there's a run on, on UST or significant depegging, then 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 the question is, well, how does that uh, uh, instability affect the crypto ecosystem and and in what ways you know a sell-off in Luna or a sell-off in UST uh, causes some type of volatility transmission across other crypto assets themselves. Would you, see a, the would you foresee a big sell-off of their Bitcoin reserves to save Luna and would that have the impact of yes, bringing down Bitcoin? I, I think that Yes, and, and what I was going to mention is to get into the off the off chain reserve world, we have to see uh, utilization of stable coins off chain, and we're not seeing that for the consumer purchases. But my point about concentration risk is exactly that. Okay, let's say we have 10 billion reserve. What if it moves to 100 billion reserve? And then we have a scenario where we have 100 billion market cap of UST, 100 billion reserve of, of, of Bitcoin, some type of a, a run uh, or, or um, instability on UST, and then the Bitcoin reserve has to be used in order to uh, maintain the peg. Could the utilization of the Bitcoin reserve transmit volatility across the crypto ecosystem? It would seem obvious that it could. And it also seems that the Terra Foundation potentially becomes a, a whale of, of uh, the largest size, potentially, in the entire crypto ecosystem, which might be concerning to people in the crypto ecosystem in terms of safeguards and how that's used and and uh, in what ways that can transmit volatility across the crypto ecosystem too. And and as people continually come into the crypto ecosystem through you know uh, accounts on centralized crypto asset trading platforms or you know in Canada exchange traded funds and throughout the world, the you know then their potential to have a, a volatility. Uh, effect uh, and a contagion from instability in UST increases. So, Dr. Lemons, uh, what's been the feedback? Uh, you know, you, you you first put out a paper back in uh, what was it, October, uh, mm -hmm. about this, uh, kind of looking at it. What's been the reaction from uh, Terra Luna, and uh, what's been the reaction from Crypto Twitter to you? I, I'm sure are, are they sending you love letters? <laughs> I don't know. How's it been going? Some any. Re so well, I some. think so. So I, I published that paper. I published that paper in October. And when I published that paper, uh, there was no reserve with Luna Foundation Guard. I, I look at the fact that the Luna Foundation Guard is now holding Bitcoin reserves as proving my point. Like I argued in that paper that pure algorithmic stable coins, ones that just have arbitrage, just have economic incentives, and, and just use this ecosystem approach and use case value were inherently fragile because they needed perpetual demand, they needed uh, willing arbitragers, and they needed reliable price information. Since the publication of that paper, Terra and Luna Foundation Guard now has reserves. So I look at that, and I, and I know they're not fully collateralized, but they still have reserves. The fact that they have reserves now through Bitcoin, I think proves my point that these purely algorithmic stable coins are bound to fail without any type of collateral or reserve. So now uh, Luna Foundation Guard has moved towards a reserve model, which I think it makes it a decentralization illusion and creates this concentration risk. Is it sufficient to uh, safeguard the peg? Time will tell. I, I think a lot of the short-term um, uh, uh, support in this ecosystem is due to the fact that Anchor is paying 20%. And Terra mm -hmm. is having to inject liquidity into Anchor to maintain that yield. So can mm -hmm. they maintain that yield without injecting liquidity? Can that protocol be self-sustaining? Time will tell on that one. 